For now, we have 30 orphan baby chimpanzee here. Some of them are undergoing health screening. But here, we don't give them meat. Though 2% of their diet is made up of meat, the reason why we don't give them meat, because if you want to protect chimpanzee, you need to protect their habitat. By you protecting it, it means you're also protecting other wild animals. Takugama is like a, an educational center now because we are now working in five districts to try to protect the remaining 5,500. So like the people who are living in those communities, we try to provide for them a source of livelihood, give them goats and sheep and even chicken for them to start their livestock and poultry. So like if they want meat, they will not go to the forest to kill the chimpanzee or any other animal. They will just kill from the livestock or poultry they want to eat. Boom! What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Joannis or Joe Hatagua. I'm a Sierra Leonean American living here in West Africa. And if you want to know what it looks like inside a chimpanzee sanctuary, then this is the video for you. All right, cool, so we're going to a place called Taco Gama. It's here in Sierra Leone. It's actually right outside of Freetown on the way to Regent, like the Regent area. It is a chimpanzee reserve. What they've done there is they've taken endangered chimpanzees and put them into little clusters and groups. And what they're doing is raising them in, in the hopes and the attempt to put them in a suitable place to live the rest of their lives in the wild. A couple things to keep in mind. Number one, we're not allowed to touch the chimpanzees at all or even get close to them, so all of the viewing is done from afar. And number two, the way it's structured is they set it up in the different stages. So they catch them, they get them when they're really young, usually from poachers or some that are dealing with deforestation or even some people who have them as pets. And then they bring them there. And what's interesting about chimps is that they develop their own hierarchical structure and a structure for making sure that someone is in charge, right? And so what they're doing is they're in these groups, they have their leader, all the other chimps fall in line. And so what you're going to see is these different hierarchical structures and the guys there explaining that stuff to us. Jane Goodall came to visit at one point in time. She's the one who taught sign language to gorillas and all of that. So very, very well known place. Really interesting stuff. Something that most people don't even know is available. So uh, yeah, check it out. Warning, you have entered the western area of Peninsular National Park. This is protected forest and catchment area. No hunting, lodging, trapping, use of firearms, or any other form of encroachment or, uh, and poaching is permitted within this area. Respect the laws of this land. National Protected Area Authority. Ministry of Agriculture. Forestry and food security. was officially open to the public in November 1995 and our aim is to rehabilitate orphan and abandoned kids with the aim of releasing them back in the world. So it's very important to have in mind that this place is not a zoo but a sanctuary, a protected area that guarantees all the necessary conditions to protect animals. This was our first visit. She inspired Mr. Bala okay. to, yeah, to set up the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. This is our second visit. So in 2019 was the second visit? Yeah. Okay. This is the president and during the, the visit, mm -hmm. they declared the chimpanzee to be a national animal. But she's now an old woman. <laughs> Most of the chimps that are here are from human home. Some of them might have come into close contact with human and we are not sure of their health status. Chimpanzee are 98.6% genetically similar to us. So like when they arrive, we don't mix them with the resident chimps. We put them into quarantine for a minimum of 90 days. Some go beyond that because some of them when they arrive, they have bullet mark and they also have machetes mark. So for now we have 30 
of a baby chimpanzee here. Some of them are undergoing health screening. This is our surgical building where we do our minor operation. After the 90 days health screening, we move them to the other phase, which is the reintegration phase. We have three of them because chimpanzee, just like us human, they are social animals. They live in a social and complex group. Here also we try to create that artificial families for them. Once they have accepted one another, we can now move them to the next stage. But doing that is a bit technical and critical. It depends on their age and gender. It is more easier for us to integrate baby chimps and female, but very difficult to integrate adult male. Reason being, they fight a lot for territory and dominance. So at the back of this cage, I don't know if you can see, there's a chimp sitting. He's the oldest chimpanzee. His name is Tom. Tom is 43 years old. And chimpanzee, if they are in the wild, they can live for 45 to 50 years. And in a sanctuary like this, where proper care has been taken, they can live for 60 and above. This is group two. We call this group the Mac group. The big guy in the, mid in the middle, his name is Mac. And he's the leader, so like we name the group also Mac group. So after completing the reintegration phase at stage one, we pass them here. They are 13 in number and all of them have accepted one another. They are now living as a one big family. And this stage also is a practicing ground for them. Since most of them we are from human home, some of them are unable to learn the skills which they should have learned if they are in the wild. This is the reason we provide for them the poles for them to improve on their climbing skill. The rope is for them to gain their balance. And here we feed them six to seven times a day. Reason being, as you can see, there are no fruit trees in the enclosure, they only depend on us. We give them leaves, vegetable, and fruits. We also have what we call the bulgur ball. It's a mixture of bulgur, Benny mix, beans, and granite. We give them because here we don't give them meat. Though two percent of their diet is made up of meat, the reason why we don't give them meat because if you want to protect chimpanzee, you need to protect their habitat. By you protecting it, it means you are also protecting other wild animals. And for that, for their protein, we also give them egg, boiled egg. When you give them the egg, they, they crack the egg, the egg. They don't eat the shell. So how do they even determine who's the smartest, strongest, and can protect the group? When you bring them together like this, when they all don't know each other? I told you after they complete the reintegration phase, mm -hmm. we pass them. They have been together for a very long time, and uh, you can tell during feeding time. The leader will step up and will show that he's the dominant. Like Ma, as you can see the body size, you know that he's more stronger than all of them. Mm. And as soon as the food came, he was in the middle. Yeah, sometimes when they fight, he will go in between them to separate the fight. That's a good quality of a leader. And most of the time, the females are very close to chimpanzee. As they grow older, they become more aggressive. Like we have a group that we call the high security. Mm. Those guys are very good at escaping. They are great escape artists. So they don't get seen by the public? No, no. Yeah, that's, that's, so, that's fine by me. Yeah. Since <laughs> most of them have witnessed where the entire family has been killed. Like if you want a baby, you need to kill the entire family. Because the mother of the group members, they will never want to leave the baby behind. So when they see a larger crowd, they get annoyed. And they go for stone and start making all kinds of noise. So we don't want that to happen here since we are trying to rehabilitate them. Right. Yeah. Though they are the most close to us, but they are still chimpanzee. The first group was a quarantine group. The second group was this group with Mark, Mark's group. And now this is the third group. So like all the skills they learned at stage two, when they come here, they can start implementing them. So that, that's a clear indication, mm -hmm. the climbing skill. Now they can climb so high, but they cannot jump from a far distance. They are not like monkey. Monkey, they have tail and their tail help them to gain their balance. So this is group three. We call this group the maturity group. After they have completed with two, we pass them here. The enclosure is four acres. Mm. And there are 17 of them in this group. It's very difficult for us to see them. You can only see them during feeding time. And after collecting the food, they mm. go. Mm -hmm. So this is a clear indication that the chimpanzee want to live in the forest. This is their home, not for them to be in human houses. Their age is between 1 to 21 years old. At 13, they are matured enough. 13 years old, they are matured enough to produce. But here, we don't allow that. Because this place is just a rehabilitation center. It's not a breeding center. Mm -hmm. And also, it is against the Pan Africa Sanctuary Alliance. It's prohibited for them to give birth when they're in the sanctuary. So, like what we do, the females, we give them contraception. That's just part of their nature. They are very aggressive. But for them, they reconcile very easily. Just like us humans, it's not 100%. It sometimes fails. 
Mm. And when it failed, we allowed them to take care of the baby. In this group, we had um, two contraception failure. Somebody, the one that, that I was calling, we have gave birth to someone that's the name <laughs> of the baby. How to speak chimpanzee? This work was done for us by Dr. Jane Goodall. She has been able to interpret about 38 chimpanzee vocalization. She assisted us with this one. Hoo-ha, hoo-ha, hoo-ha. Does anybody here speak chimpanzee? <laughs> I will die if you don't let me have it. So another fact about them also, they can't swim. They have more muscles than fat if they swim. They sink. They sink, yeah. Mr. Bala, the founder of this place, bought Bruno in 1988 for $30. Bruno is no longer in the sanctuary because in 2006, we have the greatest escape. We are 31 Chimpazi escape. Some of the guys who escaped are in this group. 31 of them escaped. By then, there was a team by the name of Judo. He was very intelligent. We do work the way the care staff open and close the sliders so like you break the slide door and that one of them escaped. Fortunately, 21 came back on their own. Okay. Maybe they might have said, guys, we need to go back because at Akogama, we have been fed six to seven times a day and they came <laughs> back. The six we are rescued. But Bruno, Sabi, Charlie Boy and Toko, they are still at large. Bruno was just 21 years old. It's just a case of probability. Maybe he might be alive because when they escape at home, he was 21 and for them they can live for 45 to 50 years and those four guys that escaped they were part of the eight that initially started the sanctuary in 1995. so that concludes the tour we went and saw the five different areas where they hold them and they, they basically grow them up through this process and they help them mature to getting to a point they can potentially put them out uh, back into the wild. Unfortunately, they're due to deforestation and to the killing and eating. They're unable to do that at this moment, so they're still trying to find a place that is suitable for them. But in the meantime, they're giving them five to six meals a day and helping them build the skills they need to be able to move on. This is really informative. They've won awards from the Queen. Dr. Jane Goodall has come. It's definitely been one of those places that it's a hidden place here in Sierra Leone. Not a lot of people know about it, but I'm glad I came. So if you like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're not already a subscriber, like, comment, and share it with your friends. All right, cool. So it is really sad to hear some of the stories that you hear about how some of these chimps were found and the, the devastation that happens to them and the trauma that they go through. You know, they're very high functioning primates. Although they're very violent, and I would consider them like the serial killers, I think maybe, of our species or the species that's closest to humans. But they also do have a lot of similarities to humans too. They're the second closest to us in terms of genetic makeup. So it's really tough to see, but it's awesome to see that Sierra Leone is taking an active role in putting together the sanctuary. Unfortunately, it's not done by the government. It is done by a private enterprise that is nonprofit, so they do request that you send money. So I'll get the information down below in the description if you want to help to preserve this chimpanzee, preserve a taco gama. With that, if you found this interesting and you want to see more content like this, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And then you can check out the next video here or another video here. All right, guys, see you on the next video.